Well, my name is Jessica, and we're here to continue our series on bless, rhythms. And just as a reminder, um, what bless stands for, begin with prayer, listen, eat with, serve, and story. So that's bless. And these are just practices for our everyday life that uh, we can do to just love our neighbors, right? So that's what we're talking about and hopefully also doing. Um, and just notice I didn't say to convert our neighbors, right? We're loving our neighbors. You know, what they believe and where their heart is is really up to God. We're living in obedience to Jesus' command to love our neighbors. So last week, Will took us through beginning with prayer. And I cannot overstate, do not skip this step. <laughs> Begin with prayer. Um, God is already at work in the lives of the people that he's put in our path. And we're following his lead. He's not following our lead, right? We're following his lead. So we begin with prayer and he invites us as he reveals what he's already doing. He invites us to join him in that. So we listen to God in prayer, and then today we're going to talk about listening to others, listening to the people God has put in our path. I used to this. Uh, just quickly, these are the books I use to prepare for today. Um, the first one is Bless. That's like literally this series. <laughs> um, so I recommend picking that up. I think there's even a copy in the atrium you can borrow. Um, and then. People skills, um, someone gave me this book <laughs> uh, a few years ago as a gift. <laughs> but um, it talks a lot about listening, so that I used that and read that a few years ago. And then uh, The Nine Arts of a Spiritual Conversation, which comes from Q Place, which we've talked about here, um, which is basically like discovery Bible study um, that's driven by people's spiritual questions. Um, and it, in nine arts, as well as bless, listening is at the front end <laughs> of the arts. Uh, so I don't like to be talking all the time, so I'm going to just ask you, and we already answered this maybe in the community time, but what does it take to be a good listener? There's this shout, shout out some answers. Eye contact. Eye contact, Eye contact yeah. Paying attention. Paying attention, <laughs> yes. Don't interrupt. Oh, if we like all mastered that one thing, <laughs> we could change the world. <laughs> Being interested. Absolutely. Asking questions. Yeah. Showing compassion. Showing compassion. Absolutely. Putting others first. Putting others first. Yeah. How are you Empathy, empathy, absolutely. Trying to understand the other person's point of view, where they're at. All right, you got it, we can go home. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you can, and then think about this privately. Would people who know you call you a good listener and why or why not? You don't have to answer that out loud, but you can think about that. Uh, Robert Bolton, who wrote People Skills, says that many of us have been trained to be poor listeners, yet, ironically, we spend more time listening and doing, uh, than doing anything else. And the quality of our listening greatly affects both the personal and the vocational dimensions of our lives. So it's preparing, a, you know, we've got to have a meme in here, right? <laughs> uh, this guy says, you don't need to tell me twice, you need to tell me five times, because <laughs> the first time I wasn't listening. And the second time I was thinking about how sad it is, there's no baby butterflies. And then the third time I was trying, but you mumbled. And then the fourth time I wasn't listening again. Um, and sadly, that's kind of like all too true, right? That's kind of the reality. Uh, that we, we kind of aren't the best listeners. I want to talk about, just mention two types of listening. So the transactional versus relational. Um, so transactional is like what's happening literally right now. Like I'm talking, you're listening. There's not a whole lot of like interaction, um, um, two-way interaction. It's more about like conveying information. You know, like I have an agenda 
and I'm getting it to you. <laughs> um, there's not a lot of commitment, right, beyond this 30 minutes. I mean, hopefully you will commit to be better listeners, <laughs> but there's no like personal commitment between you and me beyond this time. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about practicing relational listening, which is two-way interaction. You know, there's the speaker, but the listener also can ask questions. They can clarify. They can reflect back what they're hearing. Um, it's not just about information, but there's an exchange of feeling, too. There's a commitment that's growing as the people be, build trust and get more emotionally involved with each other. Empathy is, is paramount. Okay, if I have any word nerds here, listen comes from two uh, words. One means hearing, and then the other means to like wait in suspense. So listening, good listening that we're talking about, is to like hear the words with the attitude of like, leaning in and like waiting. You're like hanging on every word, right? And that's the kind of listening we want to practice. Um, it's the next step in helping our neighbors know the love of God. And the good thing is, it's a developed skill. So we can practice it. And we will today. <laughs> we will. But first, before we get to that, why does it matter that we're good listeners? Um, why is this one of the practices of bless? Well, first, um, listening is loving. And Jesus told us to love our neighbors. Any relationship starts with listening to someone's words, their life, right? And if we are uh, the kind of listeners that seek to understand the person and not like try to just explain ourselves, but understand them. That's really one of the best gifts we can give somebody. David Augsburger says that being heard is as close to being loved that for most people it's indistinguishable. When people feel heard, they feel loved. And then on the flip side, when they don't feel heard, they don't feel known and they don't feel loved. So if we want to love the people that God's put in our path, we've got to be intentional about listening, listening to understand them. Many of us have been taught to give gospel presentations, which is transactional, right? Rather than engage in spiritual conversations, which is relational. You know, we mean well, uh, but it's one way, it's agenda driven, it doesn't really convey the love of God to people. And uh, unfortunately, I know this from personal experience. You know, when I first became a Christian as a preteen, I thought, well, my dad needs to know this. My dad needs to become a Christian. I want him to have eternal life, right? Um, you know, so I'll try to talk to him. But it kind of quickly on my end became like the defining point of the relationship, right? Like, and I kind of came to even believe that, well, our relationship can't really grow because we don't share this thing in common, right? So guess what? <laughs> the relationship growth was pretty stunted. <laughs> um, and a friend eventually helped me see that actually it's the exact opposite. <laughs> you know, I needed to know my dad. I needed to listen to his life, right? Not just focus on a particular outcome. I needed to make the relationship, um, you know, we want to build the relationship. <clears throat> so in a listening approach, you know, I'm curious about you. My primary, primary goal is to understand you and not just give information. Our developing relationship is more valuable to me than any single moment of conversation. And my respect for you and desire to know you takes precedence over my verbal content, right? That's what we, that's the kind of listeners we want to be and just the kind of people, right, we want to be. 
uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, he was a, <clears throat> a pretty famous Christian writer, um, he wrote that many people are looking for an ear to listen, uh, but they don't find it among Christians because Christians are talking where they should be listening. You know, and like, I've, I've been that. Um, and then even more extreme, Doug Pollock wrote a book called God Space. He, said, he says, engaging in spiritual conversation without listening is like driving a truck or driving a car blindfolded. Like, it's harmful, <laughs> right? <laughs> so let's not harm our friends and neighbors. Let's uh, love them by listening. <laughs> okay. So the first is we love by listening. The second reason we want to be good listeners is that it actually helps the speaker in, in many ways. Um, as, pe- as speakers are heard and they feel understood, they also begin to better understand themselves. We could help them become aware of their emotional world, um, which that's important because your emotions drive your motivation. They drive your actions. They drive your purpose in life. Um, So it's good to be aware of your emotions. We can help people process their strong emotions in healthy ways. Um, If someone can talk with an empathic listener, they're less likely to go do something irrational on their based on their strong feelings, right? So we can literally like help someone not do something crazy. (laughs) by listening, we can just lighten someone's load by sharing it through listening, right? We can help people discover their own best answers when we listen. Like, how many of us have ever needed just a sounding board, right? We just need someone to just be there while we talk something out and then we figure it out. Has that ever happened to you? (laughs) Yeah. Like, sometimes we don't even need to say a word. (laughs) We just need to be there and listen. Uh, but we can, <clears throat> you know, help people just by listening, maybe reflecting back, but give space for people to arrive at their own answers, which is always better than like someone just telling you, right? When you discover it for yourself, it's like it's, it's yours then, right? So we can do that for people by listening. People don't always want to just be told to answer, right? <laughs> they, they want a friend to be alongside them as they discover. And then um, what's most compelling for me is getting to the deeper, most important issues. You know, sometimes those important issues uh, are where we're most vulnerable, right? <laughs> and so people at least maybe have mixed feelings or flat out don't want to share about what's most important because it's scary to share that. But um, I'm going to just read this. Empathic reflections, which demonstrate understanding and acceptance, so that's the listener's job, (laughs) are much more likely to foster exploration of those important areas. Right? If people feel safe to talk about them, then they can explore that. Unfortunately, most people are prone to zero in on and solve the least important problems, the presenting problems, while more critical problems remain hidden. So like a real simple example is like when you have a screaming toddler, right? The presenting problem is the screaming, the behavior, right? And you, you want to stop the screaming. <laughs> um, but really, the real issue is like, I'm hungry, or I'm tired, or I'm overstimulated. And you can't really solve here without getting here, right? So why this really matters, right? Coming up with good solutions to minor problems while the deeper concerns are not even addressed is one of the biggest sources of inefficiency in industry government, schools, families, churches, counseling centers, etc. right? I think every single one of us has probably encountered this in some area of our lives where those deeper issues are just not getting addressed because we don't have the safety to explore it. 
When we listen with empathy, we create that safety. When we listen with understanding and acceptance, we create that safety to explore and hopefully ultimately like solve <laughs> the deeper issues, not just of our individual lives, but of our wider community, right? Uh, of our churches, of our families, our schools, our world, right? So this is the way I see it, that listening is, it's a crucial step in bringing heaven to earth, you know, which is our ultimate like desire, right? And we wanna see the kingdom of God here on earth and listening is a part of that. So that's why this really matters. We cannot bless the people in our lives and our cities, our world without good listening. So let's get to how, how do we do this? Uh, I love this quote by Margaret Wheatley. She says, listening is such a simple act. It requires us to be present and that takes practice, but we don't have to do anything else. <laughs> We don't have to advise, we don't have to coach, we don't have to sound wise. <laughs> we just have to be willing to sit and listen. Um, so first, let's talk about being present, the kind of posture or attitude we bring. Uh, and then we're gonna look at the nitty gritty. Okay, but I'm gonna need some volunteers because here we do discovery Bible study which means I don't just come tell you what the Bible says. Uh, we are going to discover it together. So could I have just someone read this verse for me, please? Thank you. Yeah, you can come up. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, I guess. <laughs> but thank you. Okay. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so much. So what do we see in this passage uh, about, what does this tell us about Jesus' attitude? Just shout out. Yeah. He was humble. Yeah. Other-centered. Mm -hmm. He was selfless. He listened to the Father. Absolutely. He listened to the Father. Yeah. Yeah, he came with humility. He laid aside his own self. So when we listen, we reflect that same attitude. You know, listening requires putting others first. Um, and that's not always easy to do. But uh, we, you know, Jesus had that secure position of being God. We have that secure position of being God's children. Like, that is our position. We stand as Jesus before the Father, right? So we can be free to lay aside our own selves, our agenda, our need to explain ourselves. And we can listen with humility to others. Okay, let's see Jesus in action. And can I get another volunteer to read, please? Yeah, Avi. Thank you. You're good. Okay. Um, <laughs> as Jesus approached Jericho, a blind beggar was sitting beside the road. When he heard the noise of a crowd going past, he asked what was happening. They told him that Jesus, the Nazareth, <laughs> was going by. So they began shouting, Jesus, the son of Dayton, David, has mercy on me. Be quiet. The people in front yelled at him. 
but he only shouted louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and ordered that man to be brought to him. As the man came here, sorry, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Sorry. Okay. Lord, he said, I want to see. And Jesus said, all right, receive your sight. Your faith has been healed to you. Sorry. And instantly, the man who could see, he followed Jesus, praising God. And all he saw, it praised God too. Thank you, Avi. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so what does this tell us? Uh, what do you see Jesus doing about listening? Like, what, is, what do you see him in him and his listening? He cares. He cares? Yeah, he cares. He asks a question. He asks a question. Yeah. Yeah, he heard, he heard the man, right? And then he was moved to respond, right? And then, yeah, Jesus, this is surprising, right? Jesus asked a question. Like, it may seem obvious, what does the man want, <laughs> right? Um, like, first, Jesus is God, like, wouldn't he know? <laughs> and then, like, he was blind, so maybe we think, that might be obvious. But Jesus, even Jesus, didn't assume he knew what the man wanted. So if Jesus didn't assume, we can't assume either. <laughs> um, you know, a while back, a couple of us um, fostered the city support friends. We got connected with a family who um, needed some help. Um, the person on the phone telling me about the family was like, you know, the housekeeping, it's really pretty out of control, like maybe you can help with that. So then we went to visit the family, um, and we offered to help with housekeeping, but like, that was not at all what they were interested in. See, the grandma was going through chemo, and so what they needed was meals on her treatment days, because by that time there was nothing left to prepare the meals. <laughs> um, you know, so we, we can't come in assuming we know what someone wants or what someone needs. We have to listen, and that takes humility. All right, also, we need an attitude of love, right? We said, already said how in our culture, listening is often interpreted as love. If I really care, I listen. You know, I surrender my desire to be heard and understood to understand the other person. And that takes love. Um, Notre Dame professor John Paul Lederach says, listening as a technique takes art and skill, but such technical discipline does not in itself lead to a deeper, deeper level of genuine listening. What leads to the deeper level is whether I interact with you about, as a person about whom I care. Listening is a spiritual discipline if, like a spring, it bubbles up from genuine love. So how we listen first, we come in with a posture of humility and love, right? You know, we can be such a huge gift to others if we come in with that posture and just hear their story, because everyone has a story, right? But who's gonna listen to it? You know, let it be us. And when we listen with love, we can hear their story without judgment, without fear. <clears throat> It takes time to like, build that trust, build those relationships. Um, this does not happen overnight, but our God is relational, and so we need to be relational too, right? That's how he interacts with us. And with his spirit living in us, you know, we can have the humility, we can have the love, we can have the self-control that it takes. And it takes practice. So next, let's just talk about uh, like the physical nitty-gritty practices. And then we'll put it into practice. So we don't just use our, use our ears in listening. We use our whole person. So what does that mean, whole person? 
Well, we use our body language, right, to listen. Um, when we're listening to someone, we might like lean in, tilt our face toward the person. We're watching for their uh, nonverbal cues. Um, we maintain eye contact. Someone mentioned that earlier. Um, what else? We, you know, our face might mirror their emotional state, like to show empathy, to show under, that we're understanding where they're at. You know, we, we position our body that, to show her that we're paying attention. And then our focus. So, oh, well, my phone's over there. But like, we put those phones not only on silent, but we put them away, right? <laughs> to show that we're not distracted. Um, we don't interrupt. <laughs> you know, we, if we ask questions, they're relevant. They're focused on what the speaker's saying, not um, on ourselves. Again, we, we look at their nonverbal cues. Sometimes the words they say may actually be misleading, right? Someone could say, I'm fine, and not be fine at all, right? So we have to look for other, other clues, like, what are their hands like? Are they tight? You know, what are their eyebrows doing? Are they furrowed? Are they raised? That body language tells us what's really important to the speaker and tells us the emotion behind their words, especially the eyes and like the facial tissue around the eyes are big clues to what really matters to the speaker. Um, so it's not just about hearing the words, it's about connecting to the heart. That's really the, the, the heart of listening is that emotional connection, right? Like, have you ever been talking to someone you know they're not listening, and you're like, tell me what I just said. <laughs> and they can have the recall to say the words you said, but do you feel heard? <laughs> no, because they're not connecting with you emotionally, right? Like, it is so much more than the words. So we look at those clues, right? Um, and then reflective responses. That's a really effective way, one, to show that you actually care about understanding their meaning, right? And two, to just correct any like misunderstandings. Because you could have a person talking and then a person listening going like this, right? <laughs> and not even be aware that there is misunderstanding. So a reflective response is just like saying back what you heard, kind of. So like, so what I hear you saying is this, or so you're saying this, or oh, it seemed like that made you upset because of this. You know, we don't just reflect the words, but the emotion. Or that sounded really great for you because of whatever happened. And that gives the speaker an opportunity to be like, well, no, that's not what I was really saying. Um, you know, or it just, if you did understand, well, then they feel understood, <laughs> which is the goal. Okay, and then finally, our curiosity. Um, you know, when we show that we are curious and care about the things that are important to the person, you know, that's very validating for them, and it creates that safe space to open up genuinely, right? So it's just like asking follow-up questions. You know, like, oh, how did that make you feel? Or why did you think that? Or just tell me more. I use that on my teenagers all the time because, you know, you get those one-word answers. <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> um, okay, I'm checking the time. And then the important thing is you ask the questions and then you wait, right? Wait for them to answer, to even figure out maybe what they're feeling or thinking. Because some people have never had to articulate it maybe before. So give them that space to figure out what to say and answer. Listen to the whole story. OK, um, I think like my time's up. So I just want to. You know, there's these four H's, five P's. I wish I could talk about listening to places. 
I don't have time for that this morning, but if you um, want to scan this QR code with your phone, this will take you to just a document. It has those like four H's of just questions to ask people um, as you get to know them or as you continue interacting with them. It has the questions about listening to places uh, like Paul in Athens. Um, you know, he observed what was happening in the city before he ever spoke to anyone. And then um, it has these um, listening questions for just where you work, where you live, and where you play. Um, just to kind of tap into like who and what is in your neighborhood or in your workplace or your school um, to help you just make steps to engage. So I encourage you to check that out. You can take that home, try it this week. But right now I want to do an actual listening exercise. So we're just gonna pair up, like find a partner. I just want like the person, the first person, just tell an early memory. And you know, don't explicitly say how you felt about the memory, just tell the memory. You know, and this is just a practice, it doesn't have to be anything profound. <laughs> um, and then the second person, you know, listen to the words, but also look at the body language, maybe ask a follow-up question, maybe reflect back, but see if you can pick up what is the emotion of that memory. So one person tells the memory, the second person listens and tries to read all the clues to the emotion of that memory. And then switch. So like do like three minutes and three minutes, okay? Ready? Okay, I hate, I hate cutting you off because I love seeing this happen. And thank you for being willing to do this listening exercise. You know, the great thing is, like I said earlier, listening is a developed skill. We can practice it. So what you just practiced, you know, now go and do that with the people in your workplaces, in your schools, uh, in your neighborhood, right? Just keep practicing, keep practicing it. And follow Jesus' example. Take that posture of humility and love. You know, grow curious about the people around you and um, really listen to their story and try to understand. We cannot bless the world without listening. Um, if you haven't scanned that, you know, still scan it. Um, there's a time where we will need to put our deeds into action, right, to love people. But just don't underestimate the power of beginning with prayer and listening. You know, the eating, sharing story uh, is not going to be as effective without those first two, okay? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, I just pray that we will put these things into practice. Uh, I pray that we'll just remember that we'll go further than just beyond this 30 minutes, Lord, and that we will actually become better listeners to the people in our lives uh, for your glory, God, to love them well. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that we carry you with us to help us in this. In your name we pray, amen.